Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pulse Studios here and today we're going to be giving you a little insight into the ultimate Reaper course, the big nine hour monster where we talk about everything to do with the basics of getting Reaper going, getting to know how it works and getting into mixing and some of the fairly advanced techniques that you can do in Reaper. Today we're going to talk about side chaining, side chain compression, uh, side chain gating and how to do that in Reaper. So I've got a mix in front of me here that is essentially done and if I hit play Sounds pretty good. Let's say that the bass, for instance, we want to have the bass get out of the way of the kick drum. So the way that I would do that is I would have the kick drum being sent into the side chain of a compressor on the bass. So the first thing I need is a compressor on the bass. Now I'm going to use Reaper's own recomp because I know this one can take side chains and the way that I know that is looking at the top right of the plugin it says 2 slash 4 in 2 out. What that's telling me is currently we are using two of the inputs to send audio into the left and right out of a possible 4 and we're sending two outputs left and right. So the slash four means that you can have another two inputs going into this plugin. It's been designed in such a way. Now, what we want to do is click on this and it gives us the plugin pin connector. So there's a tiny little button for a plus here, which adds a couple of channels for us. And that's now added three and four. So this has now become a four input plugin. And the channel itself, the base group channel that we had here, if I just open up the routing, this now says track channels four. Because if I drop that down, you can have as many tracks as you want uh, on a single channel in Reaper. It can get crazy, but for this, we want four because everything works in stereo pairs in Reaper. Even if it's a, a mono source, we think of it so the mono comes in on left and right because we have left and right speakers. Even though the source is mono, we think in stereo pairs in Reaper wherever possible. It just makes life easier. And so what we now want to do, if I just solo the bass group, anything we do with compression here will be affected by the sound of the bass. And that's because the way that a compressor works is that it actually splits the sound in two. So it splits the sound into the actual signal that is going to be compressed and separately it sends the signal out to what's called the detector. The detector is the part of a compressor that listens out for when the volume's too loud and when it should be compressed. Now what you can do is you can switch out that detector and take that away and add in something else that's telling the compressor be louder, be quieter. And that's what you would call the side chain because the way to think about it is the audio goes in, the audio goes out, but the way the, the compressor is told what to do is somewhere at the side. It's not the input, it's not the output. We never hear it. But it's kind of being, if you actually had, say, a compressor pedal that had in and out on the top, if you wanted to affect that with something else, you'd have to stick a sound in the side. So it is literally the side. Now, the way that we want to change this is we want, firstly, to send, let's say, the kick drum to those channels three and four on the bass. So I'll close this down for a second and find the kick drum, here it is. 
and now open up the routing window which is this little button here and so that's the routing for the kick now I want to send this sound to the bass group now by default that's going to send the sound out to input 1 and 2 on the bass group which isn't ideal because what that means is that we're going to hear more kick drum because that's coming out of the bass group as well as the bass sound. We don't want that. What we want to do is change this with the drop down from one and two to three and four. And that's now going to send the kick drum out to those other channels that we made, which are never going to be heard by us, but are going to go in to that compressor. Let's just hit play quickly. And you'll see the meters here on the bass group. You just see it next to my head. That's clipping, but that's just because I'm sending a bit too much kick drum there. So I'm just going to turn that slider down a little. See, there are four faders going here. The bass looks kind of steady, and then there are two more meters that are going buff, buff, buff. That's the kick drum. Now that's not doing anything yet because we've got one more step in the chain. Uh, we've not told this compressor to specifically listen on the side chain. Now that's where down here there is detector input. And we change that from main input left and right to auxiliary input left and right, which is channels three and four coming in. Now that changes everything because we listen to the bass now. You hear that going wah, 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 wah. If I solo the kick at the same time, you'll hear those ducks in the bass happen at the same time that the kick hits. Now that's not something that I often use in a mix just because it's not my style, but having it available to you is very, very useful. One thing that I do do a lot is I will sidechain a gate. So let's go through a gate. And one of my favorite examples there is that I will sidechain the snare to the room microphones on a drum kit. So here's the room microphones on this drum kit. And what I like to do is have the drum room using a gate uh, so that the snare makes the whole thing on the room go pa pa and pop. And so the way that I think about that is I have the original drum room, but then I have more drum room every time the snare hits, because that way I get a bigger pa, pa, pa out of my drum room. So the way that I will do that is firstly, open up Reaper's gate, which is called Regate. You can do this with any plugin that supports extra inputs and extra side chains, by the way, not just the ones that come with Reaper. And so let's just give it a little bit of a... Uh... So that sounds kind of cool, but that is never going to be perfect because just using this on the room mics, all the other drums, every time they get hit, they're going to trigger this gate. Even if I bring all the dry in to add into this wet. Doesn't sound much different because it's not a clean trigger off the snare. So what we want to do is do what we did before, add two tracks here. So this is now one, two, three, four with an auxiliary input. And we want to, there's a little shortcut if you've got your mix window. If I just click in here and send, that brings up this routing window. 
and I can now send the snare out to the room. Make sure it goes to audio three and four. Now go back to our gate. Nothing's changed because we have to change our detector input. So let's just make this wet only for a second and just listen. There we go. So you hear now that's going ba ba ba. If I preview filter output, which is previewing what's triggering the gate, that's the snare channel that's making it go da da da. So what I can do now is have the dry signal exactly as it was, turn the wet all the way down, and then bring in that extra room that's going ba ba and watch what happens. So we've gone from this and in the context of the mix if I bring the whole drum kit in, uh, let's just listen to the drum kit with that gate off and then I'll shift click to turn that on. Suddenly the room goes bah, bah, bah with a bit more guts because I've used a side chain on that gate so that something else is telling that gate to open. The possibilities are endless. And if you found this really useful, check out the Ultimate Reaper course with me. Uh, it's a nine hour course where we talk about not just this, but all sorts of techniques, uh, how to use the EQs and compressors and inbuilt plugins, how to do gain staging properly, how to uh, get third party plugins, installed and working properly everything's in there so check the link in the description have a look and i would be absolutely thrilled if you were to check that out thank you everybody and i'll see you in the next video see you later